Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the third part of my USA holiday vlog. This one will cover where I basically took an overnight train from Seattle to San Francisco and then my adventures in San Francisco for a few days thereafter. In any case, enjoy! Like I said in one of the previous episodes, I forgot how awesome like the food buffets and the selection of food was when I got to the US. I mean this was the hotel me and my mum stayed in in the last night of our time in Seattle before we got the overnight train from there to San Francisco and as you can see the uh, breakfast buffet is just to behold. I mean there was all sorts of stuff. Cereal, scrambled eggs, waffles, English muffins, sausage, ready to pour coffee and all sorts of stuff. Oh, it was just great. It was a great way to sort of fuel yourself up before the uh, overnight train ride, which we'll see how we got on with that. Mind you, me and my mum's train ride did get off to a fairly decent start. The train station we got off at, or got onto the train from, were at uh, King Street in Seattle, was really quite a nice place. It was, and we saw this mechanical beauty. I mean, a bit. From the outside, this thing looks awesome. Double-decker, majestic as all hell, gleaming in its chrome, sort of like, sort of... Oh, it looks brilliant. It looks like something you'd really yeah. enjoy riding out across the steps of American countryside on. Although, as we'd soon find out, it probably wasn't going to be as comfortable as we originally thought it would actually be. See, the thing is, with an overnight train like this, you're of course going to have to sleep at some point. And there were beds in the uh, cabins that everyone was in. There was two in mine and my mum's one, yeah. with one coming down from the ceiling and the other being basically folding out the two chairs in the room so that they connected to each other. But because of how small our cabins were and how much the train swayed when it was going across pretty much any sort of terrain on the tracks, it just really didn't make for that comfortable of a uh, sleeping experience and so our experience wasn't as pleasurable as and relaxing as it could have been. This also wasn't particularly helped by the fact that the food on the train was a bit pants. As you can see here, this is the breakfast I had on the train after we woke up and it was a bit lacklustre, I'm not going to lie, it really wasn't that great. The grits were just watery, the bacon was lacklustre, the eggs just tasted of nothing, it, yeah, it just wasn't great. Mind you, it was made up for a lot by the fact that the scenery you saw on this train ride was great. I mean, you can see here, we're going past loads of amazing expansive fields and lakes and everything. I mean, the scenery on this train was amazing and a sight to behold. And after arriving at the train station in San Francisco, we then took our stuff off of the train and went onto a bus. And I'm not going to lie, while the scenery going across the bridge into San Francisco was, again, oh, it's just brilliant. It was dampened somewhat by the fact that our bus driver wasn't the most helpful or, you know, just communicative, really. So we had to kind of figure things out for ourselves when we arrived to where we were in see. San Francisco so we had to go in this hotel here to just get some Wi-Fi so that we could figure out how to get to where we were staying. I should also mention that that wasn't the hotel we were staying at but after we did find the place where me and my mum were staying at we managed to find this nice little rotisserie sort of cafe here and they did all sorts of foods like chickens, salmon, salads, breads, rices and everything and it was nice to have some fresh properly made food after 24 hours on that horrendous train and you can see here I've I picked some lovely rotisserie chicken cooked in an Italian style with herbs and lemon and with some tzatziki and quinoa and my mum had some salad and flatbread. I mean the stuff there was great and then we went out for a, a nice little bit of froga after some sightseeing. I picked Oreos, vanilla and granola. A very good choice. Very, very good choice indeed. And that was pretty much all we did on the first day in San Francisco. We just ate a nice food and relaxed after that horrendous train journey. And then on the second day, my mum had her flight back later on, I think it was the 29th of June. And uh, we decided that before she would leave me and I would go the rest of the way on my adventure in America on my own, that we'd go for a little bit of sightseeing just down by Fisherman's Wharf and we saw a lot of cool things down here. There was loads of sort of seafood restaurants with things like, you know, 
chowder served in bread bowls and stuff and there was loads of like old ships tethered to the bay but a couple things that really caught my eye were first the uss pampanito which is a uh, balao class submarine that served the u.s navy from uh, 1944 to 1945 as a natural warship and then uh, from 1960 to 1971 as a training vessel and on top of that we also got to see this old beauty right here a converted armed trawler that had been turned into a uh, escort ship from an old uh, cargo ship during the second world war to protect american convoys going from uh, san francisco to the uk as a military history nut for me it was just great seeing these things i mean i love my military history mainly land warfare but this was great the next day after that, after my mum had flown back to the UK, I decided to go out for a little adventure by myself in the last couple of days by myself in San Francisco before I would meet up with the tour group a few days later. I did originally try to go to Alcatraz, but the tickets were all booked up for that. However, as you can see from the previous shot and this one, my brother recommended to me that I go to Coit Tower, which is one of the landmarks that I regret to admit I'd not heard of before in San Francisco. However, I'm very glad my brother did recommend it to me because this thing was great. It was like the TARDIS. It didn't look enormous when you're at the entrance of it, but once you got into it, you, you can see like half of the entirety of San Francisco. It was great. This tower was basically built because Lil Hitchcock Coit uh, left her estate or at least part of it to the city of San Francisco when she died in 1929 and people figured that a good monument to her generosity and contribution to the culture of the city was to create this amazing monument and I'm not gonna lie I think that's a pretty good bet it is an, a magnificent thing to visit and you get an amazing view of San Francisco particularly Fisherman's Wharf I would definitely recommend visiting this thing it's not too expensive to visit, I only had to pay about $8 and I'm glad I spent every single penny of that because this was well worth it. In any case that concludes this part of my vlog mini-series of my adventure through the United States this summer. I will be releasing a few more parts of this which will include the tour group bit I did and my adventures in LA. And don't worry, I will be doing some more gaming videos in the near future. I haven't completely abandoned that concept. In any case, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Stay safe, have fun, and until next time, I'll see you on the battlefield. Bye-bye for now.